So welcome audience and listeners. We have uh, today John Campbell, who's the executive producer of In Famous Future. We're at the College Board um, Dream Deferred Conference. And here we are here to learn about your movie and your screening. Thank you for being a part of our podcast. It's my pleasure. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Yeah. So what inspired you to do this documentary and how did you discover the Eagle Academy. So initially, I was doing a documentary on uh, the issues of education in America, mm. and uh, I'd been traveling around, going to a few different uh, um, universities. Um, NYU was one, um, and you know, my director Richard Butterworth and I, we would kind of like go to a few places and really try to capture some of the stories and the compelling issues that some of these students were facing. That was the initial plan and then uh closer to uh christmas a good friend of mine told me that i should meet david banks the ceo and president of eagle academy foundation and so i said sure um you know she's a good friend of his and uh she's someone i respect highly her name is susan chapman and uh i met david banks and the very first thing david ever said to me was i have the greatest story that has never been told and I mean it literally. That was the first thing he said, and it was uh, so captivating to me that um, I asked him if I could spend some time around him and go to some of the schools. And within a couple of weeks, I realized that I needed to change the conversation and spoke with the director and said, "We need to really tell a positive story about black and brown boys yes. and change the conversation about the issues because there's a lot of people talking about the issues, but who's talking about solutions? Who's talking about something positive and something inspirational?" And I was inspired by Eagle Academy students, educators, and Mr. Banks, and uh, really kind of wanted to focus on that and that's how the infamous future came about yeah and so what brought up the title in famous future right so the title really for me was um almost um a dictatorship as one has been dictated to mm. the dictatorship for me is you know um we spend so much time seeing on television um and in the news and in magazines and newspapers um Black and brown boys are the ones committing the crimes. It, it's impossible to believe that that is the truth every single day. Um, but it's the dictatorship. So um, I really felt that I wanted to take that dictatorship and spin it on its head. And really talk about here are those so-called people doing amazing, powerful and inspiring and life-changing things. So I wanted to use that negative and turn it into a positive. Now, when you decided to come here to the college board to mm -hmm. present one mm -hmm. thing you were mentioning to the audience was this is a global issue mm -hmm. and you also mentioned that you were not yes you didn't bring you were not brought up here in the Correct. u.s Correct. yeah so what have you noticed specifically that is happening in the educational system like you've you've mentioned like you know everyone knows like the media like yeah. why our ceos doesn't reflect right. all uh, all our people in this right. country what do you see the big difference so okay so there i think there's two parts there one is talking about about, um, I think more about um, race um, on a global level as a black man or mm -hmm. as a black person um, and the other really is on the educational level and, and how um, I think if I'm understanding correctly and the educational side of how do I see that in this country in terms of how race is treated okay so the first part for me is um, racism is global it's very difficult to fully um, explain um, and for someone um, who is maybe Caucasian it may be difficult to fully comprehend because it's not your life every day right. so from um, it being my life every day I've seen that there's more of a, um, a silent racism in many ways um, in the UK that is affected um, you know that, that a lot of black people are affected by um, but I also know um, just as there are good people in some places there are good people in London who are also Caucasian who are very supportive and, um, uh, and are part of um, working for um, a better life for all and part of trying to create solutions. Um, I do see that there, but I do know that it is such a small percentage that it's difficult to really see where the changes are. Um, you can watch television in London um, in 24 hours and you may see two or three black people. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, on television. Um, and that's disturbing. You yeah. know, there's a few million black people there now. And um, and it's it's unfortunate that we're in this day and age where opportunities are not being created for us to even um, have some of our own things. Um, and, and if you notice even some of the famous actors, you know who they are because they're over here doing a lot of the work. Um, and they do try to help. I know for a fact David Ayolowo, I know for a fact Idris Elba um, and uh, um, uh, Aman and many others are in London trying to make an impact whereas in America part of the difference is there is such a loud voice saying black lives matter and we matter and let's work together and um, we deserve you know and I love that Um, however there is a, a challenge that comes with that as well because there's so much sensationalism to the negatives um, that it's difficult for a black person to really feel um, a sense of um, community and citizenship when it comes into a corporate um, environment. You, you hardly ever see black people at the top. It's difficult. Um, so I, I think about that, but I also think from an educational standpoint, it's, it's critical, as we were talking earlier with the film, it's critical for um, uh, educators to appreciate that a kid who's coming from 79th Street in up in Manhattan is not going to be like the same kid who's coming from maybe um, Brownsville right. in Brooklyn. Th- their mindsets are different. So we can't expect the same things. We have to be open to an approach that really um, helps and supports both for, for the learning process and for the thriving process. And I think sometimes it's just um, one mandate. This is the way it is. And if you don't like it, then you're out. Yeah, and in on the Q and A panel, mm. and even right now, mm. this is something close to your heart. Yes. You know, I could feel that. Yes. So, do you mind sharing what you feel comfortable with to our mm. listeners? What's your story? You know. Yeah. Okay. So my story is: um, I grew up in London. Uh, my father's a minister. Um, I grew up very much in the church, and um, was very at a very young age um, got involved in entertainment and um, art. Started with gospel music, and then moved into to pop and R&B. I was writing, I was performing, and I actually started that way. Um, That's why you can hold that mic so well, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was, it was very, it was something very familiar. You know, I had worked with many great labels um, and worked with many great artists um, from America as well as Europe. Um, but I was a very strong person um, growing up even as a kid um, strong but caring w- what I mean by that is strong because I was determined that I wanted to make something of myself mm-hmm. um, but um, caring because I cared to know more than I did you know um, growing up I felt kind of sheltered just by being in the church yeah. most of um, my um, up to 18 years old but what I started to do was read books like M. Scott Peck's The Road Less Traveled, and I started reading Gary Zukav, The Seat of the Soul. These things really started inspiring me to see the, seeing more about myself as a human being. And I started to take that and push that with the strength to really kind of um, uh, try and achieve some things. And so I moved from um, London to Atlanta and spent two years there and was still in the music industry at that point and then moved from um, Atlanta to New York. And when I got to New York, um, I had taken a job literally for eight days at Citigroup. Um, It was just a very short contract. Mm -hmm. And on the fifth day, a lady had asked me um, if I'd be interested in another job. And I said, sure. And 17 years years later wow. <laughs> I, I was um, uh, for the digital strategy team I was a global chief of staff there so I then left that um, to getting to film I felt I knew from about four or five years ago that something was calling me back into creativity um, and, uh, and and it was what triggered it was my boss actually um, resigned when he resigned I said okay I need to resign now yeah. too and and he said what are you going to do I said I'm going to do me I'm going to find out what else it is I need to do I know that there's a purpose um, for my life and um, I need to go and see what that is and that very week was the week that um, a young man that I was mentoring from London introduced me to the director of this film okay 
And I have to shout out a thanks for uh, Richard because yes. he encouraged me to still come and grab you Absolutely. for this interview. Yeah. Incredibly talented and amazing young man and an amazing cinematographer. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. No, no, when yeah. he emailed me and said, like, oh, yeah, I'm on a shoot in New York for CNN. Yes. So he's doing a lot oh, of great stuff. He's, he's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But also, thank goodness for the movement that you've had in your own personal mm-hmm, life mm-hmm, because, like you've mentioned, there's been a movement here. Yeah. You've won a lot of awards. Yes. So, what is the next step? So, like, you've inspired a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So many people come up to you, like, "Oh my God, mm-hmm. I was crying." Yes. Oh my God! So, what is your next mission that you're hoping this movie will do for others? So, you know, we've just started um, uh, the film festival circuit. We did Pan African Film Festival here in Los Angeles mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Um, we just got into the Manhattan Film Festival and the Dumbo Film Festival. We had won the um, uh, Spotlight Award. Um, Congratulations! And, uh, thank you so much. So things the, are just the golden awards. Yes, award. yes. yes spotlight. <laughs> thank yes. you. Um, and so you know the fact that the film festival circuit starts in January and we're already getting some great attention. And we've also um, with Eagle Academy Foundation mm-hmm. and with the Eagle Academy Schools, we're now going all over the country. We have a calendar that's kind of full um, yeah. on a weekly basis. Um, and uh, we're going to Columbia in a couple of weeks, Columbia University, um, and uh, we, we, we're doing their teachers' conference. And so we go from state to state. Um, I was just mentioning uh, earlier that Amazon, we're going to Amazon and doing a couple of screenings for nice. them. So there's, there's some great things coming up, and it's a great opportunity for um, people to kind of see something that's positive and uh, I just want that to continue and so we are t- also talking distribution soon as well that's okay great up. so right that's now if we have listeners whether it's a student a right. parent yes. or an educator yes. how can they go see this film so um, I think the main thing is to join us on our social media okay. um, on Twitter we are um, TIF mm-hmm. docu um, which is the infamous future docu but just the initials um, on Instagram we are at the infamous future Mm -hmm. Um, and please feel free to follow I get many questions every single week from people wanting to know where can they see it and and I'm quite good and I have a good team and uh, we do respond and we do communicate and we try to make sure that whenever we're in a town where people can get to see it that they can come to that screening great so through your social media as well right and then you also have a website as well yes right it's uh, the The infamousfuture.com absolutely okay fantastic okay great Thank you so much for your time for today. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to SI Counseling Podcast. Here we help students find information to help them improve their opportunities throughout high school and beyond. SI works to help students grow into individuals committed to faith, justice, leadership, service, academic, excellence and compassion so they can be with and for others you can follow us on social media at si counseling on twitter and go to our website at siprep.org and under academic departments click on the link to counseling thank you again until next time